Hello everybody, I hope you're good. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a print out of your cut lino piece. So we've already done the first two steps in terms of the lino, where you transferred your image and then you cut your lino piece. So now we're on to the last and final step and the step where you can get super experimental with, okay? So here is my cut lino piece and here's an example of my print. So you can see that the print is a mirror image of the lino, okay? It's the opposite way around. And this is quite a good quality print, okay? In that the black areas are nice and flat and black. There's a few little fluffy bits that I want to show you. This is what you, if you in your first or second print and you notice that you're getting quite a lot of fluffiness or it's quite a light print, that's where you know, okay, I need to make sure I don't miss those areas uh, with my pressure so that I get a nice even print all over. Um, and that will make a little bit more sense when um, I show you the process. So I'm just going to show you my setup first of all. Okay, so here is my little art desk. Okay, you can see that I have a little homemade tripod there um, for my videoing. So during lesson time, you can try and get creative with this. What I'm using is like a glass and these are like scissor holders from school and a ruler and I just pop my phone up on top there. So just above my desk, I have the HPL words that I would like to focus on throughout this task. So we're gonna work on being hardworking. In particular, we're gonna look at perseverance. And that is perfect for this task because we wanna make sure that we do not give up, especially if this is new to you guys. You want to focus on keep going, keep giving it a go. The beauty of printing is that you can do it multiple times, okay? Persist in effort, okay? That's the same thing. Keep going, keep trying to get that good quality print. Work diligently, work systematically. There is a step-by-step -step process that I'm gonna be showing you, and that is the system that you need to follow, okay? And then the last thing is don't be satisfied until you have that high quality print that it's appropriate in its precision, okay? And it's the desired outcome that you want. Now, we're also going to be looking at meta thinking again, our self-regulation. So this is, as I said before, really important, especially when we're working from home or you're in a different classroom and you're not with your art teacher. So you need to learn to be a little bit more independent in your artwork. So you're going to monitor throughout the process and I will show you how you can do that. I'm going to show you ways that you can self-correct, especially when you evaluate one print and see, okay, how do I, how can I improve that in my next print? And then you can self-correct. Okay, so here's my little setup. All right, what we have is a flat tray. So I believe that you guys received a um, flat white palette. Okay, but any flat white palette will do. Then you have a roller. Okay, you've got two pots of ink, you've got a black and a white. Suggest just asking your parents, can you borrow a small spoon just to help you get that ink out of the pot? Okay, uh, you've got your lino piece. I've got some extra little inks up there. And then you have your printing paper. So in the pack that we gave, you would have received this nice kind of textured paper. This is paper especially for printing. Now you can print onto any paper, but this one is particularly nice. And then what I've done is I've cut these little pieces of paper that will help me to lift up my printing paper in case I get ink on my hands. I don't want to get ink on my paper. And then a bigger spoon. Okay, I'll show you what that's for after. There's my example print. And you can see I've covered my desk in newspaper, uh, the life and art section, of course, um, to make sure that I don't ruin my little desk. Okay? So, I'll just... Let's get ready and do our print. So in our tray, I'm just gonna move that out of the way. So in our little tray, what we need to do is get some of the ink out onto the top, okay? So always put your ink onto the top of the tray, not in the middle. And I'll show you why now in a sec. I'm just gonna use the bottom of the spoon to get it out because these pots are quite small. And that ink will wash off the spoon pretty good as long as you wash it pretty promptly. Okay. 
there. So this little blob of ink at the top of my tray is called my ink well, okay? So it's like a well, like a, you know, if you go to the well to collect the water, that's where it stays, that's where you collect things. You keep that blob there. With my roller, okay, I'm just gonna dip into the ink well and I'm going to spread it across the tray, okay? The reason why I'm spreading it across the tray is so that I have enough room to make sure that I can roll it and get it evenly on my roller. So you don't want it to be too wet. You wanna listen for a sticky sound. When you don't get that sticky sound, you have too much ink or too little ink. So if you can hear that, that's what we're looking for. And just check your roller that you've got ink all over it evenly, okay? Then I'm just gonna take my lino piece, I'm gonna put my tray there. I'm gonna take my lino piece and I'm gonna apply my ink. Now, so learning from my first print, I wanna make sure that I get it nice and even around the edge. So you can see it's a little bit too faint here. So I go back onto my tray, covering my roller in ink. Make sure that I have everywhere dipping into my inkwell again to get a little bit more ink. And I would usually kind of do it quite systematically in that I'm working my way down, being very diligent with this, being very careful to make sure that I cover all areas. Okay. should be getting I'll show you in the light that kind of effect on the liner with the ink okay so it shouldn't really be transparent anywhere but there shouldn't be big blobs of ink either okay and then quite quickly because you don't want your ink to dry too much so I'm just going to spread it out at the bottom there because I know there's a few little blobs so you want to be quite quick what I'm going to do I'm going to pick up my paper with my little cut piece of paper because you can see my hands have gotten pretty inky, okay? Just to make sure that I don't get any smudges on my lino or on my printing paper. I'm just going to turn my around like that. Now, this is a little bit tricky, okay? But you just have to be confident and you have to be very precise, okay? So using your precision here, now I'm just going to line it up in one end. So never just plonk it down, line it up at the one edge, the opposite edge that you're holding with the paper. And then once you have it down, don't move it, don't slide it. I'm gonna take my paper off, there we go, okay? So it's okay if you get smudgy ink on the back, that's the back of it. First of all, I'm just going to make sure it's all secure and in place with my hands. And this is where the big spoon comes in, okay? So what you do is you're going to use, you can use a clean roller either, but I find that a big spoon is good to um, allow you to put a bit of pressure on it, okay? So what I do is go around the edge first. Okay, if you get a little bit of indent, it's actually quite nice sometimes. You might want to, if you have that little bit of extra paper, you might want to try and center your paper or your liner, lino a little bit more on the paper, but you could trim that off afterwards if you wanted. So I'm just making sure that I go around the edge. This is quite hard work, but that's what we're, that's what we're practicing today. Okay, so I'm making sure you can just put your two fingers on the top and hold the spoon kind of like this, or whatever way you feel comfortable. And you're putting the, make sure you don't try and do it like this because you'll scratch it. You're putting the flat side down, okay? And you 
just need to work your way across. We want to get a high quality print. That is our desired outcome here. So you can be, again, quite systematic with this. I'm being a little bit sporadic there. But in case, to make sure that you don't miss anywhere, you can kind of work your way across, maybe in diagonal rows, maybe vertical rows. Just need to be precise, you need to be diligent. Okay. So I'm quite happy with the top area. I feel like I've given that quite a lot of pressure. I'm gonna work it through the center now. need to be persistent here to make sure that I get it right. There's no worse than just being like, oh, it's fine. And then you take the paper off and you're like, oh, I should have, I forgot that area or I should have um, persisted a little bit longer with the pressure. So you need to pick up um, a little bit of speed then. Once you feel like you've pressed everywhere down, pick up a little bit of speed, keeping your pressure and you'll start to create a little bit of heat. This is really where you're working hard physically as well. Okay, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna monitor. I'm not gonna pull it all off on go. I'm gonna monitor and check. Use my little piece of paper actually. I'm just gonna lift one area and see how my print looks. It doesn't look too bad, it looks okay, but I'm, I've noticed a few little fluffy areas. So I'm gonna go back with my spoon and I'm gonna persist. I'm gonna put a lot of effort into it. And I'm just gonna make sure if all those edges in particular, the bits that you kinda of need to focus on are the completely flat black bits because um, especially if you've got a lot of black area, it's easy at the cutting stage so you don't need to cut too much, but at the printing, it can be tricky to get an even black or an even color if you're using a different color. Okay. Let me do another little monitor. Let me see. So the monitor, let's see if we need to self-correct again. That looks pretty good. Okay. I'm going to peel it off. Yeah, it's nice. And I love this type of art because it's kind of like a surprise, you know. And the big reveal, here is my print. Okay, so it's quite a good quality print, um, especially around the safety area. It's definitely an improvement from my last one in that area because I evaluated my last one. I noticed that some of the areas were a little bit fluffy at the bottom. So I really focus on those. Now there is some areas here in the center that are a little bit pale. So I would do a third print there and just make sure that, um, make sure that my print comes out nice and evenly all over. Okay, so that's what you do at the end once you print, you self-evaluate and then you realize in your next print how you can self-correct and all of this can be then put into your notebook as, you know, a record of your process. So you can present each of your prints in your notebook or a photograph of the print with a bit of annotation on your reflection for each of those, okay? Um, so that is my two prints that I've done today and my lino piece, okay? And what you can do is you can just keep going, all right? So what you actually do is you can rinse off the lino very easily right you just make sure that the ink is off make sure that it's completely dry that's the main thing as well because uh, the ink won't take to a property if it's wet make sure you dry it with a dark towel okay? you don't want to be dirtying all your lovely towels at home and what you can do is you can get experimental then you can you know use white ink 
onto maybe black paper or colored paper. You could mix the white and the black inks together to get a gray, or you could have maybe the black on one end of the tray and the white here or the white on the other end and get a little bit of an ombre effect onto the lino and print that. So you can print onto different types of paper, newspaper, um, envelopes, um, colored paper, uh, anything at all. You can get super creative with it as well. Okay, so I hope you enjoy and good luck.